Hey Jace, uh, my name is Dave Beamer. I don't. Uh, I saw your post yesterday evening in the uh, I think the Elite Body Shop group chat. Um, I don't. Um, not not active in there too much. Uh, um, but uh, I uh, remember joining that group a long time ago when Dave kind of started, and he's done some great work in the industry. And um, so anyway, I just thought hopefully this is okay. Um, um, it's probably a little odd getting a, getting a video from somebody you don't know. Uh, a little background on myself, I've owned and operated a couple shops, managed a couple shops. Uh, I've worked on the carrier side of things for uh, 15 or 16 years. Um, I, I work on the innovation team at Mitchell International now um, as a consultant um, around artificial intelligence and some of their software um, and just really trying to give them a better perspective on um, how users actually use a lot of their products, right? Um, and then do some uh, some consulting work with folks and with small businesses. And um, so anyway, just I've been around the automotive industry all my life. Dad Dad was a um, motor pole sergeant in the army. I uh, saw that you were in the in the Marines. Um, and um, uh, you know, I started off just as a as an apprentice, uh, mechanical tech actually, uh, General Motors, ASE Master Certified, GM Master Certified. Um, all the things none of that's really relevant right to the question that you asked but uh, i always feel the need to try to uh, give a little bit of background to just justify like who the hell is this guy and um uh, what gives him the right to to speak uh, right uh, about any of this so uh so i just wanted to share just a little bit of that so love love the industry um and and we've got a lot of work to do right uh not just in our industry but i think in all trade industries um just across the board so um, collision industry is close to my heart. Had a, uh, again, a couple shops and, and managed a couple collision shops, both that, uh, uh, from, from a restoration side and from a collision side. And so just the things, right. Um, I think when we have a love and a passion for cars and people, um, it's a great business to be in. There's tons of opportunity there. Um, so uh, about a career path, um, I guess probably another piece that I'll share with you is, a. um, uh, I've done a lot of work around just adult learning uh, as well um, and career development, uh, not necessarily from the HR perspective, career development um, and um, um, uh, learning design from an adult standpoint, that kind of thing. A lot of it was just me trying to figure out how the hell do I learn and then, you know, how do I, how do I get better at learning? <laughs> so it was really trying to figure things out for myself. All that aside, um, great question. Um, and even just the way that you framed it, Jace, lets me know that it's really important to you because a career path um, is very different than how do I make more money, right? That, that's a, there's, a, there's a level of insight even in the way that you ask the question. And, uh, and again, I stay really, really quiet in that group. I don't know that I've even posted anything in there. So, <clears throat> but that sparked my, uh, that, that sparked my uh, curiosity and just wanted to shoot a few things back your way. So, when I think about a career journey, right, the, uh, or a career path, it's really about the journey. And it's really difficult to understand um, a journey, right, if there's very little context. So when I think about a new technician, of course, a, a lot of things come to my mind about the things I wish I would have known. And then I would want to make sure that uh, a new technician or somebody entering the field knows those things. Um, and so you know, uh, there's a lot of that from a technical aspect, but then there's a lot of that that's a, really a non-technical component, right? Um, and just so that you know, I also, I, I've got a firm belief system that, you know, our, um, our talent um, plan um, or our funnel should look a lot like our customer acquisition plan and funnel, right? Those, we should have both external and internal um, funnels and processes um, uh, business systems and people systems in place. And so career development is really, really important. And that's true across all industries, right? Um, especially uh, in the trade uh, organizations right now. Um, you just generally have a lot of technicians that become shop owners and business owners, and they're really good at fixing cars. And they're really good. Uh, they take a lot of pride and ownership in that. And that's conveyed to um, to the market generally. And people keep bringing their cars back. And so they keep fixing cars but it's a very different skill set to learn um, one how to run a, run and operate a business and how to lead, manage, and grow people. Or it's just a different skill set. It's not that they're not capable or able. It's just different, right? Um, so we learn a lot of the technical stuff, and then all this other stuff we just kind of fumble through and accidentally see what happens. And so be a little more strategic about it. Um, 
So when I think about a career path, um, especially in any of the corporate sense, um, that what they generally do a really good job of is giving a broad um, perspective of the industry as a whole, right? Not just the organization that you're working for and what's offered there, but what's the landscape of the industry. And so when I think about a technician, I think it's great. Or, or, um, I think you said technician in your, in your, maybe you just said, I think you said new technician. But I, th I think ir irrespective, I think any of the um, the roles within the organization, it's really important to understand the entire industry. And so what do I mean by that? So when you think about the industry, um, you know, there's the insurance side, right? There's the carrier side. And what are they responsible for? They're responsible for the coverages of the vehicle, right? For um, what is it, you know, um, what's covered and what's not covered and that's what that's what they pay for and that's governed by a policy right and there's a lot of nuances so I can go as deep you know as you want but um, I, I didn't want this to be an hour-long video obviously especially from some strange dude you don't know so um, so there's the insurance side of it right um, and then and what they're responsible for and how does that differ uh, and then there's the the collision side of it right and then how does the collision side differ from the mechanical side and what are all the moving pieces in that, right? So there's, when you think about that, even there's, you know, there's the dealerships, there's independently owned, and what are the differences between those two things? Um, and then what are the components in a dealership, right? Like any business, there's, you know, there's the, yeah, I, I'll try not to get too deep. So there's a lot of uh, differences in uh, within a dealership as well and what they offer. Um, and then the collision side of things and what are they responsible for? And um, how is that, how does the insurance side of things um, kind of um, influence how the collision side of things are done and really unpacking, um, you know, the, uh, the industry as a whole. I, it was also really important uh, and I didn't learn until a lot later on in my career, really important to understand the different players in that, right? Not for just so the insurance companies, um, um, mechanical facilities, collision repair facilities, parts suppliers and vendors, the salvage side of the business, and just really kind of get a good understanding of, you know, here are the kind of big major chunks, if you will, that impact and influence our industry as a whole. And then you can kind of take it down or double click a layer, you know, as they get um, more familiar with the industry and you can build that into the, the training curriculum, if you will, that, you know, Hey, six months in, I'm just going to expose you to some, some more terms, some additional context, because a lot of it, you know, when we learn, we can't take it all in at once. And, you know, people like us that have been in the industry for a while, um, we've got all the knowledge in our head and we want to, you know, we want them to know what we didn't know. We want them to do better than we did. We want them to you know, be onboarded faster, be more successful, be more productive, all of those things. And so frequently we just kind of dump, right? We just kind of unload on it. And, and folks don't learn that way. So chunking it down, right? So like the first one would be, you know, here's kind of the industry as a whole. Let me give you uh, an introduction. And then maybe that next layer down could be the vendors that are involved in that and just familiarity. And then the next layer down could be what some of those roles are right within all of those organizations and what they're responsible for because ultimately a career path is about where do i see myself right um and none of us want to do the same thing forever well i say none of us there's a lot of technicians that that have been doing it 30 or 40 years and they absolutely just love being a tech and that's fantastic um but young folks you know uh younger folks ambitious folks they don't want to continue to do the same thing forever, right? They want things that are, are going to continue to challenge them, know what's kind of coming down the pike, know how to plan for those things. And so that's how I would give them kind of a, uh, a visual um, overall of what's possible. And again, I'm, I'm happy to jump on um, and talk through any of those things or, or just send you some additional context. So then... You know, there is, um, and I think through kind of that next thing is, is really trying to then separate out what do I want them to learn? Um, and let me say it like this as well, Jace. Like, I think when, we, when we're when we hiring anybody new, right, um, retention is a, is a big concern, right? Um, and what I do believe is just like a customer, what I do believe about employees is that, that if you continue to add employees, team members, whatever term you want to use, 
if you continue to add value to them and they know inherently that you've got their best interest in mind, you're looking out for them, they're going to stick with you, right? Today, In today's day and age, if you get somebody five years, you've done really, really well, right? Um, <clears throat> and so just continue to invest in them. And it doesn't have to be expensive to invest in them, right? There is, you know, there's iCard training, there's, you know, there's David Lures um, information, there's um, Collision Hub, there's all of these different opportunities for them to learn, but it doesn't always have to be an out of pocket. Sometimes it's just knowledge transfer. Sometimes it's looking out for their best interest. Sometimes it's developing them in ways that nobody else will, because you're looking out for their best interest that then adds that value. It doesn't always have to be monetary. Um, sometimes it can just be knowledge transfer, right? Of, of pouring into them and helping them understand, um, get a better understanding overall perspective about the industry. Um, and then how that impacts them and how they can be better. So with that being said, the val that's what I would consider an internal like value add to the person. <clears throat> so the next I kind of break it down into two, two buckets, right? There's the technical aspect of the career journey, right? And then there, and that's the, the technical, the, uh, the transactional component of doing the job, right? Doing the, um, doing the repair. So there's, there's that component. Um, and then there's the other component, which is more the transformational type stuff, which is, um, and I hate the term soft skills, but right, but it's, it's the, it's the human side of the business, right? It's things like, and it's the, it's the 